Hey all, welcome to another episode of Tansom Has an Idea, also known as Dr. Chaos Mad Fiber Artist. <laughs> so all this dip dyeing has been so much fun, but I wanted to try it with roving. So what I have here is just a shower hook that I clipped the roving through and then soaked it. And I'm going to use this to dip it and hope it holds together. Don't know if it will. We're going to see what happens. I've got my pot heating here. I've got that purple mixed up here just because that's what I had on hand. And we're going to give it a go. It might felt, it might fall apart, it might just explode. I don't know. That's why we're trying this. So the water is just about ready. I'm just going to adjust the camera and we'll give it a go. All right. Citric acid is already in the water. Just going to add the dye. And then soak the cup. Make sure we get all that dye in there. And I think I'm going to lower the heat so it's not boiling. All right, I think I'm going to shut it off completely so it's not boiling. The cats, as usual, are racing around in the background. All right, here we go. We have our roving. And it did have a little bit of shed on the end, so I don't know what's going to happen with that, but we shall see. I'm also curious to see if we get full penetration of the yarn with the dip dyeing, or the roving with the dip dyeing method. I have no idea what's going to happen. I've never attempted this kind of dip dyeing before. Oof, it gets heavy though, I'll tell you that. There's a hundred grams here. And wow, it is getting heavy. All right, I'm just gonna sink the rest of that in. I wanna kinda clip, no, can't clip it on the side. I need something longer. Okay, there we go, it's in. All right, well, it didn't fall apart, so that's a good first step. I need my tongs. Here they are. And the water looks clear. And there's a little bit of color left, so we'll just give that a couple of minutes to soak. And then we're going to haul it out. But we do have a really nice gradient happening here. So if this doesn't felt, I think it's going to be really cool. Um, initial problems is going to be the weight of the roving. Once we start dipping it, it gets very, very heavy. Because it's just soaking up all that water and everything. And it holds a lot more than yarn. So that is a, a small concern. But just a small one. Uh, so I will let that dye bath exhaust and we'll put it to cool before we wash it and I might try another skein or another 100 grams of roving and we'll see what happens because uh, this actually it looks really cool. So if it got full penetration, which I'm suspecting it might not have, well, let's just see. Well, what do you know? It looks like it did get full penetration. Okay, so that's another question answered. Hmm, well, this is very curious. All right, I'll be back. All right, so the dye bath has exhausted. I am going to hook my shower hook and just gently, gently, gently Put the roving into here, and I'm going to put that to drain and cool in the sink. There it is. Does it ever look blue on camera? It's much more purple than blue. But that's our first one. I'm going to grab another one, and we'll give her another go. So I just have my stock pot full of water here, which is where I'm soaking the roving. I have them 
hung on this pants hanger that I had. I'm just going to squeeze out most of the water. I'm just squeezing. I'm not twisting because that could felt it. Um, it's just in cold water, but I don't want to take any chances. So I'm just squeezing it out. All right. And we're going to take that over for dyeing. So I'm going to try something a little different this time. I'm just going to use some river blue. I'm going to use 15 milliliters, so I'm going to use 30 milliliters. And I'm going to drop the whole thing, the whole skein of rolling in here. And then I'm going to try over dyeing it and see what happens. Wow, does that ever look purple in there? That's so cool. I love this river blue. It's, it makes the most gorgeous colors. So we'll just let that heat up a little bit more. That's still a fairly light dye. So I think I'm gonna add another 30. Ooh, well, that probably counts as one tablespoon. All right, mix that in. My brother Rick rolled me, now I've got never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, stuck in my head. It's like a permanent contest with us. We're forever Rick rolling each other. If you don't know what Rick rolling is, it's where you trick people into watching the Rick Astley video for never gonna give you up. It's an internet thing. We've been doing it for a while and for some reason it just vastly amuses us. All right, so I'm going to add three of these red. So we're still using more blue and then red to get that purple. I should probably figure out some exact measurements, but generally it's about um, three parts red, four parts blue. I don't know, something like that. You know me and math and recipes and crap. I'm not good at it. But I always use one part more of the blue than the red. So we will grab our roving. We have our handy little hook here. And I'm just going to dunk the whole thing in. I'm just trying to keep that hook near the top so I can find it again to fish it out. And I'm just going to drop that right in there and let it absorb the blue. And then we will over dye dip dye the red could be tricky because trying to get the some of the fluid out might not work no idea we'll find out when we get there for now the water's starting to boil so i'll shut that off i'm going to let that absorb that blue then we'll come back and see what happens when we add the red i'm excited okay see you in a few all right, it's mostly exhausted, but since we're going to be reusing the dye bath, I'm not worried about getting it 100% exhausted. Now, because of the way we put it in, there are some white patches, which is all right with me, because we are going to over dye it. Just going to grab that end, put it to the top, going to add the red. Are you excited? I'm excited. I want to see what happens when we do this. I think I am going to add a bit more citric acid though because it is red and we know red doesn't like to strike very well. So I'm just going to add just a little bit more citric acid. Don't put those on the stove. I'm going to mix that in and get the water heated again because the dye bath took the temperature down a bit. So let's get this warmed up again and then we're going to dip dye the roving and see what happens. <sighs> I have no idea this could go really really badly 
like really badly. <laughs> but I still want to try it. I mean, at worst, I end up with 100 grams of a felted mess. It's no big deal. I can just card it because it generally doesn't felt so hard that you can't loosen up the fibers again. You can just take uh, felted roving and card it and it will generally open back up again as long as it's not felted hard. All right, I think it's warm enough. Hmm, this is going to be tricky. All right, I'm going to start by hooking that. And then I will, because the roving is too hot to handle right now. So to get it over the pot, oops, I just hooked it over my tongs again so I can grab. All right, so we start dipping. All right, I think I can handle it. <laughs> Okay, that is hot. Imagine that. All right. Get my spoon in here. <laughs> I'm making a mess. Still don't care. <laughs> this is fun. I mean, messy, but fun. I should be doing this in my dye room, but I still don't quite have it put back together again. All right, so we're down to just a little bit of red left in there, so I'm going to try to free it from my tongs. There we go. And push it down. All right, let's see what happens with this one. I'm going to leave it till the dye bath fully exhausts. It's starting to boil, so I'll turn the heat off. And just push it gently under the water. Now stop playing with it, Tammy. You're going to felt it. There we go. All right. I'll let that exhaust and we'll see what we end up with. I don't think I'm going to like the color, actually, because it kind of looks sort of, sort of messy. We might have to do the red again. We'll see when the dye bath is exhausted if we want to just put it through like it is and try a different one and see if we can make a better color. I don't know. We'll see. Back in a bit. All right. Let's rescue it. Here's our colors. We've got blue. We've got pink. We've got purple. We've got some dusty rose in there. There's, there's a lot of colors in here. But when I was looking in the pot, I really didn't like it. Now I'm thinking it's not so bad. It's got like a stripey look to it. It's actually kind of interesting. So I'm going to put that to cool and think of something we're going to do next. Because I have no idea. One sec. All right, the water is still, but hot. So what I want to try to do is just add some dye without stirring it. Oh, look at it. Go do cool things. <coughs> some amethyst purple. Still not going to stir. And some ruby red. And I'm still not going to stir. There. All right. Now, you probably can't see it on camera, but there are like variations in color because it hasn't fully blended. So what I'm going to do is just drop the roving right in and push it down and we'll see 
what happens? I have no idea. No idea. Just the thought took me, and that's what I did. All right, turn the heat down. And see if there is already variations in the coloring. So the blue is over here. The amethyst purple is over here. It's just giving it an all over peachy color. Now I wonder, let's add a second dose of color on top. Why? Why not? We're gonna add the purple over here. Just push that under a bit so it gets into the liquid. We're gonna add, I've been just wiping it off on a rag so I'm not mixing my colors in the jars. And we'll add some blue here. Push that down into the water so it doesn't all get absorbed by the yarn. And some red over here. All right. Now, I'm going to push between the colors so they overlap a bit, but hopefully don't blend too much. And then just push it further down. I think we need a little bit more heat. All right. I'm going to heat that a bit. I did add a lot of dye in there, so it could take a little more citric acid, too, to get it to exhaust. Although, honestly, it's not doing bad. But I'm going to let that uh, set the dyes, and then we're going to have a look and see what kind of mess we've ended up with. So we're going to uh, pull our experiment out. I'm going to find my uh, book, which seems to have gone completely missing. It's in here somewhere. All right, well, we're going to fish it out without it. Oh, there it is. See, I told you it was in there. All right. So this made an interesting little length of rowing we do end up with some white well it's not quite white it's got some purple to it and we do have some redder spots some purpler spots some bluer spots overall i kind of like the combination i think when it's spun up it'll look very interesting but for now i'm going to go put it to drain and cool when everything is dry we'll come back we'll have another look and we'll do a wrap up see you in a bit all right, results time. I'm looking a super treat because I've been out moving all the that snow. We had a big snowfall. So, but I was eager to share the results of this little experiment we did with the roving. So this was the dip dyed in uh, blue. Here's the darkest going to the lightest. I still have the shower hook in there. It is nice and fluffy. It didn't felt other than the very tips, but that's typical of roving. The color penetration in the dark is very good. We got full penetration. Here's another section. This one's a little less, but still all the way through. And as we work into the lighter portions, it starts to become more white, but you can see that it didn't felt at all. It's very nice and soft and it opens up. Now this part has just a little smidge of color in it. You probably can't even see it on the camera, mostly white, but I think this would make a very interesting gradient and um, the dip dyeing didn't felt it. That's the most important part to me. 
is that it did not felt. It is lovely and soft and floofy. And I'm very happy with that. So the next one was I dyed it blue and then over dyed it with the red to try to get that purple, which we did end up getting on the ends. And then we have some patches of pink and some patches of blue. It's not as structured as I would like it. And you can see where this would have been dip, 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 that inside we didn't get full color penetration. There's actually a white strip right there. But for the most part, we have color all the way to the inside. A few little white patches, but they're going to look interesting in, in the spin. It'll be interesting to see what happens with these. But again, nice and fluffy and open. Did not felt. So dip dyeing again. Good. I think what I would do doing it a second time would probably be more dye or dip dye twice. Like do the blue twice and then over dye it with the red to see what happens then. And then the final one where we were mucking about in the pot is this one here. And I am actually quite happy with this one. It's speckly and spotty. And there are still some white patches in it. Going towards the middle, what would have been sitting in the middle of the pot. And there's some splotches of red over here. We have some splotches of blue. And we have some splotches of the amethyst purple. But overall, it made for a fairly homogenous color scheme. And I think in spinning again, it's going to have some really neat effects. And again, no felting, which is really what my biggest concern was to see how the dip dyeing would affect possible felting. So that was the results of this experiment. And I will definitely uh, dip dye roving again using these little shower curtain hooks keeps it all nice. The biggest problem is the weight. So you do need, I would probably either wear gloves or have something handy to help lift it once it's getting dipped because it does get very heavy, very fast. But overall, I am pleased with the results. They're still a little damp, so I'm going to hang them by the fireplace to get the last of that damp out before I braid them up. So I hope you enjoyed this experiment. Bobo's trying to eat the bottom of the roving. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this little experiment, and thank you for joining me. If you had some fun, do the stuff down below, because I do stuff like this. Oh, goodness. This is such a good cushion. <laughs> I do stuff like this all the time. See you next time, guys.